Bulldogs. 007, license and skill. So, got myself injured. Little injury, broke my own rules. Now I'm injured. Cessna. But it's James Bond, I can shoot that down. Shoot the wing. Um, it's almost May. We're in a heat wave apparently. Not too bad in the sun. In the sun. As soon as I pull up, as soon as I pull up the sleeves, as soon as I pull up the sleeves, the sun goes. It goes and it's cold again. The breeze is coming in from the north. It's about 16 degrees and the wind chill 14, 15. The way they go on the, on the radio, everyone's going to go out with the barbecue and all this. Ridiculous, ridiculous. That seagull. So yeah, injuries, how to recover from an injury. I talk about what I'm going to do, what's my plan. How I'm going to recover. Do's and don'ts. Do's, number one, and number one. Find your base. After you've got an injury, you've got to find your base. This involves two things. You're going to be looking. You've got to assess what caused the injury, what you're doing wrong, and then you've got to establish your base. Now, your base is where you, your starting point, where you go out on a run, even a run walk, as slow as a snail, as slow as you can go, once it's not aggravating the injury. So as long as the injury, that's the basic rule you follow, as long as the injury isn't getting worse, you can keep on doing it. If at the end of the run, you can honestly say to yourself, that definitely didn't make it worse. That's your base, that's your starting point, where you can go out, not make the injury worse, and then you want to build from there. And in that case, Distance is more important than speed. You, you, you want to be going as slow as you possibly can. Just take it as slow as you can, cover 5k sort of distance, and then once you've established that as your base, even if it's 8 minute kilometer pace, it doesn't matter. Over a distance of 5k, you've got your base, that's your starting point, you build from there, you build from there, build from there, build from there, and any point the injury gets aggravated, that's the inflammation, that's the body saying stop body saying stop doing this don't be an idiot don't be an idiot don't make your injury worse also part of the establishment of your base as I said is you've got to assess what caused it when your strides length length too long you know I, right now I've torn muscle one of the common causes of torn muscle is stride length stride length too long when you go out on your base run make sure to focus on keeping the cadence high lowering the stride length focus on that Whatever you were doing that made the mistake, whatever you did, you've got to, you've got to find what caused the injury, pinpoint it, and then avoid that, avoid that situation and correct it. So my, my injury was caused by going, running uphill, so I tore a little bit of muscle, stressing too much going uphill. So now I just avoid the hill. I'll avoid the hills. I'll avoid that hill pretty much for the next few days or whatever. It's a minor injury. It's a minor injury. I call it that. I didn't make any huge mistakes. So after you've established your base, you've got your base, your basic pace, cover flight distance, build from there, build the pace, build the distance. Do not sit on your ass for a week and do nothing and then suddenly say, you know what, it's been a week, it should be grand, and then go out and run 430 kilometer pace. That is just going to prolong it and prolong it and prolong it. Right? So, what well, if you can't run it all? Fine. Sometimes injuries are bad and so bad you can't run it all. So your next step, so now we're on to step two. Can't run at all, and even if you can't run, 
should be focused on cross training. Everybody should be cross training. For runners especially. I do not understand runners who get injured and they just will not cross train. I just I know people that just never go onto the bike. Never go on the bike. And they just banjacks themselves. Totally banjacks themselves. One guy I know in particular, I'm not gonna name him. If you know me personally, you'll probably be able to work there. He used to be able to beat me. The stride length was too long, he wasn't fixing things. Got shin splints, cracked the bone in the shin. And I'm like, dude, you can't run. One, you gotta, you haven't fixed the problem. He never fixed the problem. His day is stride length is too long. So I was like, don't run the road. He didn't cross train. He never ever cross train. He would not use the bike. And he just spent them. He'd come back, he'd be banjacks again, come back, be banjacks again, come back. Banjacks again. This has gone on for seven, eight years. It's been gone since the ice bucket challenge. Gone back up, back injured for another year, and back again for a month or two, injured again. Last time I saw him, he ran like 50 yards, he's getting overweight. It's more than that cycle. Just like, go to the bike, focus, use the bike to build your cadence up. That's a great way to build cadence. I've done a video on that before. Yeah, yeah. I just don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand cross trains. That goes for runner, for cyclists as well. Sorry, cyclists. Cross trains. Well, I don't need to do as much as the runners. For the cyclists, just to maintain your bone health, you know, keep that bone density. One run, one run a week. Three, four, five k. Thirty minutes. It's a difference between. Difference between crash being injured for a broken collarbone for two months and crashing and just being up on your feet dancing, dancing, you be dancing. The bones are so strong. People know about me as in the head. I hadn't maintained my bone strength in my head that pace. So. One of your afraid cycle. We'll go on to step three then. Walking. Walking. And just one more thing about the cross training. There are other cross training you can do. Hill walking, running in the sea, running in the sea is brilliant. I just have I, I advocate cycling because uh, it's just a it's just a good way to get maintain fitness, even build fitness build up muscle using the same muscle groups that you would when you're running you can put it in a big gear to build up strength in the bones if you crack the bone or something like that you can turn it into strength training and you got the cadence thing that I talked about it's just a good way to improve your running in my opinion good way you get growth hormones you get blood flow blood flow increases increases uh, recovery time because the blood flow delivers nutrients to the damaged area when you get the growth hormones that will increase the higher testosterone levels that will increase the recovery time there's loads of good reasons to do cycling and cycling is just one of those sports that you just you go out three four five hours every day and not get injured so well if your injury is so bad you can't cycle i've had injuries that are so bad tore completely tore the back of my ties Huge injury, huge tear, barely walk. But I could walk. So, number three. Your number one, set out, set out your base. Number two, for recovery, cross training. Number three, you gotta walk. You gotta walk. If you ain't walking, you ain't healing. I don't understand people don't walk. Walking is the greatest longevity activity you can do full stop in life you want to live to 100 you walk walk everywhere those people who live to 100 are the sort of people who walk everywhere why is walking why is walking so good for you why is it so good for healing injuries when you're walking you're even just standing right the whole air 
the whole planet air is pulling you down into the ground, trying to pull you right back down, drag you down back into that ground. The whole air is pulling at you. And the only thing stopping you from ending up on the ground and being pulled back down into it is yourself holding yourself up. So, you've got all that weight pulling down on you. And what happens is, that force of the weight pulling you down, the body has to react to that, like, like with Newton's second law. And what that does is, it strengthens all the tendons in the body, all the bones in the body. It even strengthens the DNA around the cells, the cellular structure, the DNA, the telomeres. These things called telomeres that surround your DNA. They actually get pulled by the gravity and they lengthen and they tighten around your DNA. So it actually increases cellular lifetime, the, li the lifetime of the, of, the cell, of, the, of the DNA in the cell, sorry, the telomeres. It's complicated, you gotta look it up, you gotta read into it. But yeah, once you get moving, you're gonna be stretching, you're gonna be pulling on your tendons. And you'll feel that if you go out for a very, very long walk, you'll start to feel that weight, you'll start to pull you down, that weight of gravity, you'll feel it on the hips, you'll feel it on the knees, you'll feel it on your shoulders, you'll feel the whole thing, the whole planet, the whole planet Earth dragging you down. Dragging you down, down to downtown, back down into the ground. Where you came from. Walking as well. Just like the other two activities. You're going to be increasing the blood flow. You, want to, you always want to increase the blood flow. But number one. My number one for fixing an injury, the one thing you've got to be doing is going to start fixing everything. You use everything when you walk. Everything. Like everything I'm talking about, the tendons and the knees and the feet, the joints, all of those sort of things. By having that pull on it, that pull, that constant pull, that constant weight, I'll just show it now, just to finish up this video. You walk along. I'm just going to go into the physics of walking. It's actually quite complicated how you, how you walk. When you push down, you pivot that foot off the next foot. You can do this yourself, just by doing By doing the long, by going out for a long walk. Feel the, the action from here to the knee to the hip. So feel that weight forcing you down. The weight of the gravity pulling against you and you extending the foot back up. The weight of the gravity against you and you extending the foot back up. Pulls really helps strengthen around here, around here, around here. And also up to the spine, up to up through the spine because it's pulling on the whole body. As I said, it's also pulling on your telomeres. The telomeres, as I said, are the structures around the DNA and they strengthen, they pull down. And because things are adaptive, the human body is adaptive. It heals from injuries, improves fitness from, from the stress of, 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 of the exercise, of the activity. And just like that as well, also the gravity, the pull of gravity pulling down when you walk. different as I said it's different when we're running we're running you use gravity to create momentum there's no momentum from the gravity the gravity is, is, is when you're walking the gravity is just the sort of thing that's grinding you down pulling you down it's where the fatigue comes from it's where the fatigue comes from and you adapt to that you adapt to that by as I said making your joints stronger your tendon stronger your bone stronger back and spine all get stronger Aiding the injury by by, um, by getting blood supply when you walk. So my
my number one. My number one for recovering from an injury, walking. Every time, walking. Which is where I should, should have probably started with. But the, you, I started with the base today, I went for a little run, and my little base. Do a little 5k, and then I'll know I can build the back. Yeah, I'll go out the bike tomorrow. But I walk every day. I walk every day, I walk to the shop every day, 5k. 5k, maybe you go to the sun. You don't want to hear it, Doc. Right.